Hey folks, welcome to Sean Talks Radio. This is my first episode, and I just want to give you a little uh, um, look at what I'm going to do in my talk radio, what I'm going to talk about, um, the different topics. <clears throat> um, I'm a I'm a Bigfoot fan, um, UFO, ancient alien. All that stuff, I really enjoy watching that. I, I, I enjoy kind of racking my brain and seeing how um, these things could have come about or if they were possible, if any of that. Um, fascinates me is the origin of man, um, the existence of uh, Neanderthal and the other um, humanoids that were recently discovered. And... Uh, and now with all this DNA, people doing the 23andMe, the Ancestry.com, all that stuff, um, people are starting to see what kind of DNA they have in their in their family, their genetics. And um, most of us that um, came from Europe area, uh, my ancestors come from France. Um, my brother just did our ancestry and um, turns out we're 92 percent French so I don't know if you can get any more French than that um, I guess you could six you know whatever it is eight um, <clears> percent <throat> but guaranteed I haven't checked my DNA and I might do that um, I imagine there's Neanderthal in my DNA just because where my ancestry is from so that type of stuff uh, fascinates me. Um, I'll also talk about current events if there's something big going on. Um, I don't want to talk about COVID. <sighs> Stupid. Anyways, um, but yeah, I'll even talk about politics. And uh, if any of you guys know on my uh, Facebook, I'm pretty political and cat, quiet cat. And um, so I'm going to also discuss politics. But I'll give you a heads up for those of you that may not agree with my politics that, you know, this particular show is going to include, uh, maybe it's going to be like a warning, like, oh, warning, smoking, sexual content, uh, political viewpoint that you might disagree with, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that's just a, uh, a quick and dirty on what I'm going to talk about. Eventually, I want to expand my channel so I can have guests. Uh, maybe do Skype or maybe even have uh, guests live. Um, this is my bedroom that I'm doing this from. So this might change. Um, so today I just want to do a real um, quick, it's a, a book I read and a quick review of this book. And it's uh, everything... Everything you know is wrong. Let's see if I can get the glare. Everything you know is wrong. Uh, it's by Lloyd Pye, who, uh, rest in peace, passed away, I believe, in 2013. But I've watched uh, some of his lectures, and I find his, <coughs> excuse me, his theory on the origin of man fascinating. He gets his information. Um, a lot of it is from the ancient Sumerian texts, and he translates them as literal text, where a lot of the scientists were saying it was mythology. Now, this is the very first uh, writings of humans. And ancient Sumeria, I guess, was in the area of like Iran or something like that. Um, but they had, they were, they had cities, they had, um, a political system, they had, um, a legal system. They were very advanced. Um, and I think if anyone just kind of sat down and be like, we went from living in caves, you know, chipping rocks and, and throwing spears at stuff to this complex civilization with cities and, and political systems and, and you name it. Um, 
and we're talking thousands of this is before the Egyptians before the Romans um, before the Greeks in fact the Egyptians the Rome Romans and the Greeks their all their civilization is based on the ancient Sumerians so I find that fascinating the fact that the ancient Sumerians were aware of planets that we didn't discover till our time so and we had to have advanced telescopes and stuff like I believe Pluto the existence of Pluto and um, I can't list them off the top of my head but if you read his book he explains a lot of that he goes he, he I don't I don't want to say he he simplifies anything but he's he he explains it so kind of in almost in layman's terms but sometimes he has to get a little deep because the subjects he's talking about are very deep so one of the things I learned and I learned it from I don't know if it's in I don't know I don't remember it being in the book but it could have been um, from one of his lectures that I watched was the cheetah and this is something you know I'm 53 years old and I never knew this is that the cheetah are clones of each other there's a very uh, small gene pool that creates the cheetah and I guess as a result of this um, they have difficulty um, reproducing or their babies have difficulty surviving because the gene pool is so small and I find this I'm a farmer um, we breed sheep we breed goats we breed chickens and <clears throat> we have to be careful about um, uh, line breeding to uh, parents uh, and, and ch children to parents grandparents and stuff like that and the further away you get in the, the line the stronger the species gets and of course it's always better to introduce an outside uh, gene pool into your breeding program to strengthen your 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 animals so what's interesting is the cheetah is basically a uh, cross breed of a dog and a cat and the cheetah's fur the majority of its fur is dog hair the spots on the cheetah is actually cat hair so it's a different type of hair the feet of a cheetah and a lot of people know this from you know science class the feet of a cheetah is dog feet it's uh, their nails are always uh, stick there they don't retract their nails and, and the purpose and they have like a heavier uh, thicker pads and the purpose of this is because they're the fastest running animal on earth they run over 70 miles an hour which I believe a horse can do like 40 miles an hour so a big difference so the what's interesting is the cheetah also is easily domesticated so they're clones of each other they're easily domesticated they're a crossbreed of a dog and a cat um, they were actually used as hunting companions by guess who the ancient Sumerians so what, just keep an open mind and one of the chances that the cheetah was genetically created like we would breed dogs to do specific uh, things what if a cheetah was domestically created to be a hunting companion for hunters in ancient Sumeria and then you know as same with us our dogs we have dogs that are specifically bred for certain things and your dogs get out they get loose people release their dogs into the woods which is horrible but it happens and then they mix with the local animals and become like a wild animal and but just even dogs you can you can pull a dog in that was 
wild and you can domesticate it just because that's how dogs are. Dogs are easily domesticated and cheetahs are too. So the scientists explain this phenomena of this, um, they're all clones of each other because they, they would never look beyond their scope, their, their little world that aliens don't exist, no superior beings exist, blah, blah, blah. It's, we're a caveman. This is the uh, humans evolved from apes. And there's no way that someone could genetically create the cheetah because they didn't have that technology. I don't believe that. I think we were much more advanced in the past. Um, and, and I want to say the cheetah is kind of proof of that, but people just kind of like, nope, nope. It's like almost, in, it's you're in denial that this animal exists. The animal exists. It's cloned. There are clones of each other. They're a cross breed of a cat and a dog, which we couldn't do today. I mean, genetics maybe can mess with the chromosomes so a cat and a dog can mix, but they're not doing it. Um, and the fact that they're, they are easily domesticated tells you something too. And if you look at like old, um, I've seen old movies and old pictures, like kings and queens have pet cheetahs and it's because like anyone can have them. They don't attack people. They're very friendly towards people and which leads me to believe that these animals were bred for a purpose and they were bred to be domesticated from the wild and still to this day they exist now explain this to me so if you if you google cheetahs and i and i did if you google cheetahs and you see that they have difficulty reproducing and um their babies die and this and that well, these animals have been around for thousands of years. You would think they would be wiped out by now. Um, but, they, but they're but they not. And I'm sure there's human intervention breeding them. But usually when we get involved in, in trying to save a species, um, it doesn't always work out. You know, think of the panda bear. The panda bear is very um, difficult to breed in captivity um, unlike other animals so just uh you know research it yourself google it cheetahs or clones you'll see what i'm talking about very interesting and this kind of opens up a window of pop possibility of you know like lloyd pie says on his book you know, is everything you know is wrong, is it? I mean, what they're teaching us in history, um, Darwinism. Um, Lloyd Pye contends that he agrees with uh, microevolution, which basically is adaptation to your environment. Um, but he disagrees with macroevolution, um, meaning you evolve from another species so and and I I don't want to it's not that I my ego doesn't allow me to agree that we evolved from apes because I, I really don't think we evolved from apes and if we evolved from something it wasn't on this planet because apes orangutans chimpanzees gorillas they would you would think they wouldn't exist if we evolved from them or a form of them. So I highly re recommend this book. Um, I highly recommend the YouTube videos that of his lectures. Very interesting. And I'll warn you, um, Bigfoot is in his explanation because the hominoids are the early Bigfoots, um, Neanderthal, and 
he has a great explanation of why they could exist today and it's very interesting so this is Sean talks Sean talk radio and uh, I hope you come back to uh, my channel again and I appreciate you watching and make sure you like the video and make sure you press that subscribe button I think it's over here and um, and we'll see you in the next video hey make sure you go to that subscribe button and click it <laughs>